In this video, we're going to go through some of my highlights from this month's February 2022 feature summary updates, including new updates they've made to the new mobile formatting experience, new updates to goals and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's get started with this new mobile formatting options that the Power BI team has included, which is sort of a new authoring experience that allows you to easily optimize reports for a mobile view. So basically, if you create custom formatting for your visuals in desktop view, you can now format the same visual, but only restrict that formatting to the mobile view only, allowing you with more flexibility when creating mobile versions of your reports. This feature is currently in preview, so if you want to use it, make sure that you enable it under the preview features called modify visual settings for mobile layouts. Another thing to note is that while you can format these already in the latest version of Power BI Desktop and publish it, it won't reflect on the mobile versions until the new version comes out uh, this mid-February. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking of using it. Few updates on the sensitivity labels, which we already covered in the previous months. Inheriting sensitivity labels is now generally available. This basically ensures that sensitivity labels are applied to content, which is inherited by all contents that is using that certain item. Setting default label policies is now also generally available. So as an admin, you can set it up so that any newly created reports will by default use a sensitivity label without having to set it up manually uh, and disrupting your workflow. Mandatory label policies is also now uh, generally available, which basically forces users who create new reports to apply sensitivity labels to reports when they save or publish them. And by the way, if you didn't know, Sensitivity labels are just a way to classify and protect data so that you can restrict access to data to only those who are permitted to do so. And if you want to know more about this in detail, I actually covered it in a separate video by itself. So go check it out if you haven't yet. The new format pane is now on by default in this latest version of Power BI, but it still is in preview, which is a bit weird. And I have to say, I hate this new format pane, uh, but I think it's just because it's new and it's taking me a lot longer to find properties than before. So I guess I just gotta get used to it. Fortunately though, it's still in preview. So you can still disable it under the preview features if you are not a fan of it. So there's that. And you can also share feedback in this same preview features panel if you want to give more feedback for them to improve it in the future. So make sure you check that out and share your feedback so that they can improve it. You can now select rows in multi-row cards to cross filter in your report. So the same as the other visuals in Power BI, you can either click, control click or shift click to select multiple items in your card visual. This really improves the interactivity of this specific visual. So great to see. Dynamic M query parameters now support SQL Server and other data sources. If you missed this feature in the past, it basically allows you to use parameters to use as filters on direct query sources where normally it won't be possible. Now, what I didn't know though was that it didn't already support SQL Server, but now I know that they do. And now it also supports other sources like Oracle, SAP HANA. So if you use direct query in your reports and need this ability to use dynamic parameters, go check this feature out. Goals on Power BI had a few updates, mostly on Teams notification, which allows you to see goal activities without ever having to leave Teams. So in this month's update, you'll get notification if someone assigns you to a goal, you'll see it as a notification in your Teams, 
you'll see notifications for any mentions. So the same way as doing ads on, let's say, a Power BI report or a Word document. Finally, you can also see notifications on goal status updates, which allows goal owners to see or to get notification when your their goals gets updated. You can now also have multiple owners of goals and create private scorecards in my workspace, which is a little bit interesting that now is available to free users, which I didn't know before. So perhaps I'll cover it in my future videos. There's been some improvements on the PBIX file downloadability in this month's updates. So if you worked with reports that used either XMLA endpoints or incremental refresh, Power BI would always warn you that you wouldn't be able to download this report once it's published into the service. However, it seems that now with this new update, you will now be able to. Dark mode is now available for the Power BI Windows app, which is great if you use the Windows app and not so great if you use Power BI Desktop or the Power BI service on the web like me, because those options are not available yet. I'm really dying for Power BI to include a dark mode on these other modes to stop my eyes from burning every time I have to develop a report. So fingers crossed it will come very, very soon. And one last thing for this month's update, just make sure that you have WebView 2 installed on your machine. Uh, newer versions of Power BI starting from this month will require this installed in your machine. There's a whole blog post to help you how to do it. So make sure you do it before you update to this new version. And that's really it for my highlights for this month. As usual, I didn't cover everything. I just covered the ones that I thought was interesting. If you want to read the full blog posts, I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can go read it for yourself. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.